Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'll be doing it on Cambridge IGCSE Additional Mathematics Specimen Paper 2 for examination from 2025. You're allowed to use the calculator here. Let's start. Question 1. A. Solve the equation 5 times the modulus of 5x minus 7 minus 1 is equal to 14. Now we have this 5x minus 7 inside a modulus and this means that this has to be positive. So if let's say this is 2 then the modulus doesn't change the value. But if it's negative 2 then it changes it to 2. That's what the modulus function does here. And therefore we can just isolate this modulus function by bringing everything else including this 5 here and the negative 1 to the other side. So first we have to take the negative 1. 5 times the modulus of 5x minus 7 is equal to 15, similar to how you solve a normal equation. Now the modulus of 5x minus 7 is just 3, because dividing by 5, we get 3. Now since this is inside the modulus function, we can say that 5x minus 7 is equal to either positive 3 or negative 3. Why? Because when we do the modulus, both of these will become 3, so it doesn't really matter which one it is. So we'll have two possible answers for x. So we can just solve the equation. 5x is equal to 10 or 5x is equal to 4. So x is equal to 2 or 4 by 5 and this is our answer. Let's go to part b. The diagram shows the graph of y equals f of x where f of x equals 2 times x plus 1 the whole square times x minus 1. Use the graph to solve the inequality f of x is less than or equal to minus 1. So y is equal to f of x. So in other words, y is less than or equal to minus 1. So let's draw the line y equals minus 1. It is a horizontal line going to the point on the y-axis with the label minus 1, or this point. We can label this y is equal to negative 1 and we need to find what the values of x are such that y is less than negative 1 or equal to of course. And in this case we can use the graph to solve this so we can just look at it using our eyes and see what the points are. And we need to write what x values will give a point inside this region here. So let's first label the three intersection points. Here we have minus 1.45 and then minus 0 0.4 and then 0 0.85. This is what each of these three intersection points looks like. Now we have two different sections caused by the three intersection points. There's the first section here and the second section is over here. Both of these are in the region which you have specified right below or on this line. So in this case, the x value is always to the left of minus 1.45 and to the left means less than. But in this case, it can be less than or equal to as well. So 1.45, sorry, negative 1.45 is included. So x is less than or equal to negative 1.45. And then we have another region which you use another inequality for. So x can be equal to these two values because y can be equal to minus 1. It is less than or equal to the question. So x can be these two values or anything in between the two. So negative 0 0.4 using a less than or equal to sign and an x and then less than or equal to 0 0.85. So these are two inequalities and this is our answer. Let's go to question 2. For the variables x and y, plotting ln y against ln x gives a straight line graph passing through the points 6,5 and 8,9. Show that y is equal to e to the power of p, x to the power of q, where p and q are integers to be found. So over here, let's say the straight line graph has the equation of capital Y is equal to m times capital X plus c. So if it passes through 6,5 and 8,9, then this m is going to be the difference in y by the difference in x. So I'm going to do y 
is 9 and 5, so 9 minus 5, divided by 8 and 6, 8 minus 6, that's simply 2. So the gradient is 2, and we have these points here, which are on the straight line graph. And by the way, if you're wondering why it's capital Y and capital X, instead of just writing Y and X, I'll show you in a bit. First of all, let's just substitute this M value. Capital Y equals 2 times capital X plus C. And now we can just plot, sorry, not plot, we can substitute any one of these points. I'll substitute 6 comma 5. So 5 is equal to 2 times 6 plus C. And C is equal to negative 7. Now we have m is equal to 2, c is equal to negative 7. Now we have the straight line equation. So capital Y is equal to 2 times capital X minus 7. This is with the capital Y and X. And over here we know that plotting ln Y against ln X gives the straight line graph. So ln Y is capital Y, ln X is capital X. Now you can substitute it in. So ln Y, let me just draw the line. So ln Y is equal to 2 times ln x minus 7. And this 2 times ln x can also be written as ln of x squared. So y is going to be e to the power of ln of x squared minus 7. And when we do this, we get y is equal to e to the power of ln of x squared, or in other words, x squared, and multiplied by e to the power of minus 7, right? Because when we split this, we get e to the power of ln x squared times e to the power of minus 7, and this will just become x squared. So x squared times e to the power of minus 7, which is equal to the form which we need in the question. e to the p x to the q, where p is minus 7, q is 2. That's our answer. We can see that this is what we need and this is what we have. I'll just write it a bit more clearly. Let's just change the order. e to the minus 7 x squared. Now this must be much clearer. e to the minus 7 is e to the p. So p is negative 7. x squared is x to the q. q is 2. So this is indeed in the form what we need in the question. And that'll be our answer. This is an example of a question of converting a linear equation to or nonlinear using the capital X and Y and plotting ln Y against ln X having straight line graph. That's our answer. Question 3. Find the values of the constant k for which the equation 2k minus 1 times x squared plus 6x plus k plus 1 equals 0 has real roots. So if it has real roots, that means it has to have at least one real root, 1 or 2. Well, how do you find which values of k do that? First of all, let's label a, b, and c in this quadratic equation. This term here is a, which is 2k minus 1. 6 is b, and k plus 1, the whole thing, is c. This is the constant term. This is the coefficient of x. This is the coefficient of x squared. That's why. Now, we need to use a discriminant, or let's just say delta as a discriminant. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. If it's greater than 0, that means there's two real roots. And if it's equal to 0, that means there's one real root, or in other words, two roots, but then they both are the same duplicate. Now, what is the discriminant? b squared minus 4ac. Now, this has to be greater than or equal to 0. In the quadratic formula, we can see that there is a term where it is square root of b squared minus 4ac. So if this is positive, that means it's two real roots because we have plus or minus. If this is 0, the plus or minus won't do anything. So it won't change anything, and therefore there'll be one root only. And if this is less than zero, that's when it becomes imaginary because the square root of a negative number, let's say negative a, the square root of a negative number has to be something imaginary. Well, now we can just substitute the values. 6 squared minus 4 times 2k minus 1 times k plus 1 is greater than or equal to zero. So now 36 minus... 4 times 2k squared plus k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Then 36 minus 8k squared minus 4k plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. So 8k squared plus 4k minus 40 is less than or equal to 0. How did I get here from here? That's because 
36 plus 4 is 40. So this just becomes plus 40. We can cancel that. And we can write this as negative of 8k squared plus 4k minus 40. So when we bring negative to the other side, it's still negative 1 times 0 is still 0. But then the sign flips because we're multiplying by a negative number. So that's then equal to 0. And we can also factorize a 4 from this. So it's 4 times 2k squared plus k minus 10. That's then equal to 0. And therefore, just 2k squared plus k minus 10 is less than or equal to 0. When we bring this times 4 to the other side, it's divide by 4, which still equals to 0. So that doesn't change. Now we have to solve this quadratic. You can use quadratic formula or you can factorize it. And if you do the factorizing correctly by thinking a times c is minus 20 in this quadratic and b is 1. So you have to find two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add up to 1. And those two numbers are simply 5 and minus 4. But we can't just write 2k plus 5 times k minus 4. That's because we have a 2k here. It's not just a k value. So because you're multiplying by 2 on one side, we have to divide by 2 on the other side. And in this case, we divide by 2 on the minus 4 because it's divisible by 2. So we can change that to k minus 2. So 2k plus 5 times k minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. And what is the shape of this graph? It looks something like this, right? It looks like a u because the a is positive. So this is the shape. And let's say this is the axis. So if it's less than or equal to 0, this is one of the roots this is the other root and in this case it's minus 5 by 2 and 2 so this is minus 5 by 2 this is 2 so if it's less than or equal to 0 we have to take into account this part so it's less than or equal to 2 and greater than or equal to minus 5 by 2 so minus 5 by 2 less than or equal to k less than or equal to 2 and this is our answer this is the all the values of constant k for which this has real roots Let's go to question four. Question four. A photographer takes 12 different photographs. There are three photographs of sunsets, four of oceans, and five of mountains. A. The photographs are arranged in a line on a wall. One. Find the number of possible arrangements if the first photograph is of a sunset and the last is of an ocean. We know that there are three sunsets and four oceans. So the possible combinations of the sunset and ocean themselves, only those two photographs, because there are three duplicates of sunset and four duplicates of oceans. So that's going to be just three times four. So we just do three times four, and then we have to count the other 10 in the middle, the 10 photos in the middle, and the possibilities and the number of combinations of the 10 in the middle is going to be just 10 factorial. And we can just multiply this by using our calculator. 3 times 4 times 10 factorial. So you just do 10 factorial and multiply by 12 to get 4, 3, 5, 4, 5, 6, 0, 0 different arrangements. That's our answer. Let's go to part 2. Find the number of possible arrangements if all photographs of mountains are next to each other. To make this one easy to understand, let's just name all the sunsets as S1, S2, S3, the oceans as O1 through O4, and the mountains as M1 through M5. Because we have these 12 photos here and all five mountains, have to be touching each other, or in other words, next to each other, as given in the question. So there's eight different ways to place these five mountains in the 12 spots which are available. So let's just say there's 12 dashes to put this into context. So there is one way where the mountains fill these five, another way where the mountains fill these five, another one where they fill these five. and for this, and then these five, these five, these, and these. That's eight different ways it can fill the five spots. So we do an eight. And what we multiply by? 
So first of all, let's just say they take these five, the first five spots. So M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. So that means the rest of the photos, which are sunsets and oceans, have to take some order over here. And how many different ways are there? In other words, how many combinations are there of the seven folders in these seven places? Of course, it's just going to be seven factorial. And now we have to multiply by one more thing. We can't just leave it like this. Of course, these five pictures can themselves be in different orders. For example, it could even be five, then four, three, two, one, and many different orders. So we have to count those as well. So multiply by five factorial, the number of combinations of this. So eight times seven factorial times five factorial, that's just using our calculator, seven factorial times eight. If you notice, this is actually eight factorial here. And then of course you multiply by five factorial. We get four, eight, three, eight, four, zero, zero. That's our answer. Now let's go to part B. Three of the photographs are selected for a competition. Part one, find a number of possible selections if no photograph of a sunset is chosen. So there's a total of 12 different photographs and three of them are sunsets. Oh, so if you take out the sunsets, that means there'll be nine photos left. So nine photos without sunsets, or I'll just write S. And we have to select three photographs for a competition. It's actually just going to be 9 choose 3. That is going to be 9 times 8 times 7. Divided by 1 times 2 times 3. And let's get our calculator out once again. 9 times 8 times 7. Divided by 1 times 2 times 3 which is 6. And we get 84 different ways. Now that will be our answer. 84. Now for part 2. Find a number of different possible selections if one photograph of each type is chosen. So in this case, there are three different photographs of sunsets. Remember, they are different photographs. That's why all these answers which you have done before are correct. They are different. Therefore, the number of possible selections is just going to be choosing between the sunsets. Three choose one. And then multiply by choosing between the oceans. Four choose one. And then multiply by the mountains, which is 5 choose 1. And doing that, we simply get 3 times 4 times 5, which is just 60. And that'll be our answer. Let's go to question 5. 